Okay, today we're going to be assembling a uh, four-legged walking mechanism. It's uh, kind of a common mechanical mechanism that would have been seen like from the 1950s and 60s and 70s like in battery-operated dogs and stuff like that. Basically the two rear feet simply shuffle back and forth but the two feet not only move back and forth but they also go up and down. So the two, free, two front feet are the ones that are pulling the uh, four-legged walking thing along. Now this is just a platform that you can do anything you want with. Now basically I've got uh, two AA batteries and the pack would get glued down in there or secured somehow. I've just had it sitting so we'll be fighting that the whole time. It'll be falling out on me. Right now I'm going to be using one of the uh, 1 by 90 gear ratio motors. You can use the 1 by 48 which is the most common. It's just that it's going to go really fast. If you want it to go really fast and bouncy, great. This is kind of a medium speed. The one by one twenty is a very nice, smooth walking speed. Uh, this is what I had laying around. Uh, got my normal slide switch that's mounted on there. Nineteen millimeter on center mounting holes. Uh, typically, if you get the slide switch that has the threads tapped into it, you're going to need uh, some two millimeter machine screws to screw that down with. Uh, the motor just drops in from the top and then I put in a 632 a quarter inch long 632 screw on either side to hold the motor in place so it can't come out. These cams are the same, there's only one file, you just print two of them and if you don't want to glue them on the shaft, because you could just put some glue on there and slide them on to keep them in place, you can drop a screw in there. In the case of the uh, 1 by 90 which has metal gears and has metal uh, shaft coming out you're, you're going to need some number two millimeter screws to match up to the threads and hold those on. If you're using the uh, TT gear motors like the yellow ones that have the plastic shafts well then you just need some sort of uh, number two self tapping screw like a metal tapping screw or something like that. I'll bring the two power wires up simply interrupt one of the wires through the switch so that you can uh, turn the motor on and off and here you can kind of see the action. This is going to be the rear. This is the one that just goes back and forth. And then you can see how the front one goes, not only back and forth, but up and down. And on the front one, there's a rubber grommet. There's a place where rubber grommet it gives you a little more traction to help the pulling power. Now we're going to assemble this side over here next. And there's not very many parts of this, just a lot of them you do in duplicates. I mean, the main body, of course, you only do one of. The cams, you simply print twice. The uh, long front leg part, you print twice. The uh, funny looking rear leg part, you print, print twice. And then these short little linkage pieces, you print, print four of those. So, um, based on that information, let's uh, get one of those out. And again, I'm just going to be using some uh, 632 quarter inch long screws. If you're in the land of metric, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think uh, a 3.5 millimeter diameter screw would be close. You'll have to check that out for yourself. I'm sure you can find something that would fit. You want? I normally tighten them all the way down and then just loosen them up just a hair. You want to be able to move freely. And let's put the long one on the front. Right. Before we can put the long one on the front, we need to grab where all of these uh, meet up with the cam. I'm using a longer screw. All I had is some uh, half inch long 632s. I think 3 8 would probably be better, but the half inch is going to work. And as you can see from looking on this side, we uh, not only have the long leg, which goes closest to the uh, cam, but then a short one, which goes on at the same time with the same screw. And you'll notice that on these short ones, got the screw in my mouth, one end will have a large hole, that's for passing a screw through, and one end will have a smaller hole, and that's for screwing a screw in. So to go into the cam, we want the one where the screw is going to pass through. So that'd be the large hole. Let's get that on there. And let's 
see, I need the long leg. Here it is. Get the long leg, pass it through there. So we've got these two and the screws just pass through. And we're just going to screw that on to this side of the cam. Again, that has the long front leg closest to the cam and the short linkage piece on the outside. And like I say, this screw didn't need to be this long. It's just what I had laying around, so it's how long it's going to be. Take them in and then loosen them up. So, these uh, short linkage pieces, their screws are always going to come from the inside. So, we can take, pass the screw through the rear leg, and we're going to that short one like so. Now the battery is dangling. Hopefully we won't break a wire off. And again I just uh, I like to tighten these things down and then back them off so you know it's a little bit on the loose side. Every time I drop that I keep worrying I'm going to end up yanking those wires off. Alright so that means we've Got one more short linkage to hook up. And we get the big hole, pass the screw through, and we're going to put that on this front of the uh, frame. Tightened it up, loose it back, and got to pass the screw through from the inside. All of the short linkages hook up that way. So it goes through the through the long leg and into the short leg. Phillips would be much easier than the common, but again, like I said, this is what I had laying around. Sometimes you just gotta use what's in your junk box. Alright. I loosen that up some. I don't know how much looser it needs to be. So now theoretically, theoretically we've got it all wired up. If it walks backwards when you uh, power everything up, you can either just flip the two wires around on the motor or undo your cams and your motor bolts and just flip the whole motor over and put it back in and then it'll walk the other way. Okay, something's a little tight. We gotta find out which screw ended up being on the tight side. I'm just gonna loosen these cam ones up in case it happens to be one of those. And let's just feel these others. Does that feel a little snug? Could be. Let's loosen that up a smidge. I think that one's loose. Anyway, we knew something was just a little bit tight. I think this rear one's a little bit loose. Yeah, so there you have it. You've got yourself a four-legged walking frame that you could put a body on or do whatever you want with. Perhaps put a sensor on it to uh, stop when it sees a wall or reverse the motor. You can do all sorts of things there. Some sort of body could drop down over the top. It's a very simple build, very few parts, and most of the parts you're just printing multiple of. Like I say, you print one of the body, print two of the cams, one of this leg, well, two, one on each side, two of the rear legs, two of the front legs, and then four of the short linkages. They're all the same files, so. It's not a, a long print time. See, the weight of the batteries on the back keep the two rear legs holding the thing pretty much level. Without the batteries back there, the thing would tend to want to walk like that, you know, kind of tip from one side to the other as it walks. But by keeping the uh, batteries in the back like that, you can uh, keep it balanced better. All right. Files will be on Thingiverse. 
And I think that's about it.